will be starting the session now. Krupa ma'am, take over the session, please. Ma'am, unmute yourself. Good morning, all, respected speakers of today's webinars, dignitaries, and delegates of today's session. I would like to extend a very warm welcome to everyone. Today, we have gathered virtually for the webinar on e-platform for effective research on deep learning, hosted by Department of BCA, KLE Societies, Degree College, Nagarbhavi, Bangalore. Before proceeding further, I would like to share a few words about KLE Societies, our department. Karnataka Lingayat Education Society, started in 1916, occupies a very special niche in the field of education, has now grown into a large institution that encompasses an autonomous university and over 270 institutions spread across the country and outside with over 16,000 employees working to cater the needs of more than 125,000 students. The collaborations with universities in US, UK, and Malaysia have added a whole new dimension to the KLE societies, making it on, on par with the reputed education institution worldwide. The Department of Bachelor of Computer Application was started at KLE Societies Degree College, Nagar Bhavi in 2017, with a mission to provide a high quality computer education to the students. The institution grooms it students to extend as future ITCMs. We have plenty of learning opportunities for our students. We are associated with ICT Academy, UI Path, Oracle, Palanto, AWS Academy, Microfocus, and Salesforce. Today, we are hosting our third webinar of Cloud Arena webinar series. The speaker of today's session, our webinar is Dr. Debebreta Samantham, Associate Professor, Department of Computer Science, Price Dean Tobia University. Sir is a professional IEEE member and Associate Life Member of Computer Society of India, CSI, and Life Member of Indian Society for the Technical Education, ISTE. He obtained his BSc Physics Honors from the Calcutta University, Kolkata, India. He obtained his MCA from the Academy of Technology under WBUT, West Bengal. He obtained his PhD in Computer Science and Engineering from the National Institute of Technology, Durgapur, India, in the area of SAR image processing. His area of interest are artificial intelligence, neural language, uh, natural language processing, and image processing. He is presently working as an assistant professor, Department of Computer Science, Christ University, Bangalore. He is the owner of 16 Indian patents. He is four research scholars. He has authored a, and co-authored over 127 papers. He has published nine books. He has edited one book. And so he is a convener, keynote speaker, technical program committee, TPC, member in various conferences, workshops, etc. He was invited a speaker at several institutions. Now, I request Dr. Debebrita Samantha, sir, to present his talk. Over to you, sir. Thank you. Uh, uh, may I share my screen? It is visible. Yes, sir, it's visible. Okay. Yeah. Uh, good morning, all. Uh, thank you for a uh, nice introduction. Uh, basically, today our motto is uh, the trends of the deep learnings because some people they have the lot of difficulty, confusion regarding the software and uh, whatever platform they can execute in the deep learning. So today I want to present uh, the few concept of uh, e-platform because basically uh, now the all education, research, teaching, everything is moved to the e-concept, mm -hmm. online concept. So for that reason, we also want to present uh, our deep learning concept in the e-platform environment. 
and how it is we can do the effective part how it is free or it is paid or all the things we can project before the demonstration of the deep learning uh, in e platform uh, we have to project a few concept of ai machine learning the limitation of machine learning that limitation how we can easily solve by the deep learning concept and basically what exactly deep learning is stand for that some applications and finally we will demonstrate the few example few code of deep learning in the e platform mode uh, we are doing the research for last 3 months in the covid 19 data set uh, but original data set we cannot project because we are doing the live project so few part of the features from the data set we will demonstrate today how to extract the uh, uh, positive or negative from the data set of the covid 19 uh, and also also actually basically it's not uh, uh, that one and a half hour we can finish the entire deep learning but we have to try to uh, finish the few concept enter the part of demonstrations so first we can project the ai part uh, basically everyone knows that ai stand for that uh, intellectual human brain concept behavior we want to project in the algorithm part basically how our brain is work same concept we want to project we have to demonstrate inside the computer inside the laptop or machine uh, but the problem is uh, some limitations of that uh, when you are, want to project entire coding concept to the human brain as a laptop or desktop so that some behavior some activity may be follow with the similar to the human brain just to give you one examples, just one uh, 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 persons want to observe that uh, the speed limit, if the car is uh, more than 60 kilometers, more than 40 kilometers, depends on the area. Uh, if it is more than 60 kilometers, the uh, people want to observe, want to note all the speed of the uh, car or the plate number. But it is impossible if the number of car is more and the speed is more. It's very difficult to collect all the information. For, for that reason, what we can do, we can project a camera we trained the camera as a AI concept to automatically collect the pictures of the nameplate and detect the entire character or number, whatever the information are available in the nameplate. So that type AI, that means we are trying to give uh, information, a uh, mathematical model, a uh, normal basic concept code inside the camera, just like a human brain can observe, can collect the information from the nameplate. Basically, the, these three places, we have a uh, n number of uh, information, applications, research going on. First one is speech recognition, second is NLP, and finally the image recognition. Basically, most of the people nowadays are uh, trying to convert it automatically with the concept of voice. Just uh, a few months before, uh, Google are introducing the lot of things uh, inside the Google Chrome. Mm -hmm. That entire activity of a Google phone you can control by voice. Maybe you want to send the, some uh, images, you want to send the email, uh, you want to fix the alarm clock, whatever you want, entire things you want to protect, uh, you want to do all the things inside the AI concept. And also, the most important things nowadays we are trying to collect the human behavior human activity uh, research inside the ai that is the most important role in the image recognition if you want to go the subset or few part of the ai there we can observe that deep learning machine learning and ai link each other we can say that machine learning is the subset of ai and deep learning is a subset of machine learning so that means Deep learning, machine learning, both is the part of the AI. So that means if you observe the few concept of AI, easily you can incorporate inside the deep learning with the concept of AI. So what is machine learning? Basically, if uh, we are giving some information, machine can learn, train, and give the activity. Just one small examples. We are giving the new inputs to the machines. Machines have all the information to collect to give the output of the depends on the input data sets and if it is n number of flowers how we can detect the particular flower from the given information so that means machine learning is a type of ai that provide the particular ability without being explicit in the programs 
programs we already designed, we already store inside the machines, inside the robot or whatever. Maybe it is camera or in normal software also, or a laptop also. So that we detect all the information depends on the input data set. What is the type of that uh, uh, machine learning? Basically, there are two types of machine learning. So one is supervised and one is unsupervised. Uh, basically, supervised learning, uh, that means you have uh, the input variable and the output variable, both you know properly. You have to the mapping each other. So that mapping, if it is there, so that means you can say that this type of machine learning is tends for the supervised uh, examples. But what is the unsupervised? Sometimes that uh, the input and output may not be mapped, may not be linked each other. But there is very difficult to uh, uh, classify all type of unsupervised data set. And second thing is that uh, all type of uh, high classifications or uh, high data set link directly inside the unsupervised learning mode. Unsupervised learning mode is basically uh, there is uh, unlabeled there is no label or no particular features are stored in the data set machine automatically collecting the features create the labeling and give the output so that concept is focused in the unsupervised machine learning concept so what are the limitations because if there is no limitations so no need to deep learning so that means some limitation is there which is incorporate inside the machine learning that we want to solve one by one using the deep learning concept. The first challenge is that machine learning basically uh, uh, most machine learning are used for the feature extraction part. But sometimes uh, some concept of maybe it is color features, maybe it is text informations, maybe it is video informations. So some type of features machine learning cannot support. If the number of size is huge, huge data set we have that is continuous it is coming one by one so this type of problems the machine learning cannot be solved so if the number of data set is used and continuous coming sometimes the object recognitions and example as a handwriting equations cannot be supported inside the machine learning concept so these type of problems we want to solve in the deep learning mode so what is the deep learning basically uh, same thing deep learning is nothing but as a like a human brain what exactly human brain work we are getting the information from the neurons that neurons send the information to the brain brain is interact react what exactly neuron give the information when you touch a cold glass or a hot glass what exactly information is given to the neuron to the brain that activity we are doing so that means we are trying to give a proper information inside the neurons or computers or algorithms part that react particular mode of the activity work uh, this is the examples of uh, human brain neurons and right side are small examples of how we are executing that same type of concept inside the artificial neural network. Basically, this is the activity of real neuron inside the brain left side and right side you can understand that artificial neural network. Why it is artificial? Because we are creating, giving some input set, giving some weighted, some bias, some functions and we are getting the lot of different type of outputs depends on the training data set we are get maybe it is single output maybe it is multiple output so what exactly deep learning deep learning basically collection of statistical machine learning techniques that means inside the deep learning lot of different type of small small algorithm small small hidden layer small small machine learning are inbuilt incorporate each other with the concept of artificial neural network just you can observe uh, uh, a small uh, small activity uh, or small video for one minute that you can understand what exactly deep learning. So you can understand that basically uh, inside the AI, inside the machine learning, we particular incorporate the few new concepts with the neural network that is the part of the deep learning mode. 
here some examples where deep learning is basically uh, most of the researchers they are directly used in the deep learning applications the first thing the most challenging research in the last 10 years last 20 years doing on and already few scientists few uh, companies they already got the very good result with the help of deep learning concepts the first is self driving car uh, but we are we, we we are not getting that 100% accuracy 100% predictions and uh, error minimizing part inside that part so you can uh, you can do you, you have a chance to give a more research in this particular mode self driving car concept and voice control assistant because most of the people they are trying to create their own bot bot basically mm -hmm. uh, a, a, a human robot a human uh, voice control robot which is give you a lot of information uh, using that uh, deep learning concept uh, now most of the colleges in this admission time they are creating the bot in their website that if if you are asking the, the questions if you are automatically typing the questions so deep learning bot they are giving the information one by one and if it is uh, useful when the human are not there any time people can interact directly just like a human you can you can if you, when you are typing the questions when you are getting the answers you may feel that some human is sitting in the behind of the website they're giving the information so that type of voice control assistance also you can uh, incorporate with the help of deep learning concept and last uh, last 50 years the uh, all over the world have a big challenge uh, to to minimize the uh, to minimize the concept of what exactly human are thinking okay uh, basically, uh, uh, what is the motto of that particular work is that uh, we are trying to minimize the uh, terrorist concept in all over the world. So how we can detect the uh, human mind, human brain, what exactly thinking for destroy or creativity, what they are thinking in their mind. So what we are collecting the eyeball information, textures of their face, emotion of the face. So all that type of information we are collecting, gathering and trying to observe that this human what exactly he is thinking is it is positive or negative how they are reacting all the part so that is basically we are doing um, inside the deep learning a research part it is the most useful for that and another interesting part is that uh, that uh, last 10 years in india a uh, lot of crime uh, uh, activity is that uh, kids that uh, one uh, the age of 2 years to uh, 15 years uh, that all the boys and baby boys and uh, girl boy, uh, girls babies uh, they have that a uh, lot of uh, molestations lot of problems in the school colleges uh, the big, big flat uh, corporate world so how how we can predict that uh, is my kids it's my all the babies are in safe in that place so that type of observations also we are trying to incorporate in the deep learning uh, we are we, we are uh, getting on um, uh, project from the samsung uh, they are giving this uh, type of productions that please try to create a deep learning concept uh, inside the camera that we can uh, we can collect the informations that uh, behavioral uh, behavioral human behavioral the activity within 7 days that next 7 days what exactly he want to do it is positive or negative so that also we are incorporating the deep learning mode one small example uh, how how exactly deep learning work uh, for that basics level So that means you can understand that uh, the basic thing that if we are giving a treatment training uh, to the particular machines, they can uh, uh, improve similar type of work automatically to collect the information of the neural network concept. So just to give a small examples, if we want to give you 1000 flower data set, how human can work? Human can detect uh, the difference of the flowers, maybe it is size, maybe it is color, maybe it is smell. And second thing, another important part is the features in what time, which seasons the flower is available or not. So in n number of features, n number of concepts already stored in the brain. So how neuron work inside the computer that we are creating all type of properties 
as the features in the incorporate with the help of data set if we have the proper data set we can get one by one matching concept and we can get directly in the artificial neural activity this is a small example that if the data set we are giving the two separate one is sunflower one is rose these two different class we can easily incorporate with the help of deep learning mode but how uh, the deep learning is work exactly inside that artificial neuron concept in this diagram you can understand the basics part of the perceptrons which is basically linked with the all type of deep learning concept uh, and without perceptrons you cannot execute any deep learning a positive result so that means this is the most important role and part to create a deep learning environment the first thing is that we have a inputs some operations after that we can get the positive output of two different class is it flower or it is rose sunflower or rose so that means x1 to xn all are the input every inputs have the positive or different type of weightage value that is represented as w1 and wn uh, then we have a uh, activation functions that activation functions is have the most important role to send the informations in the output area so if we can observe the uh, basic things uh, these all are inputs these inputs basically coming to the activation functions with the help of multiplications with summation that means x1 dot w1 plus x2 dot w2 plus and so on this entire summation is called transformation function this is also another role to complete your proper way in the deep learning informations now the question is why activation functions what is the why 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 deep learning give the most important as activation functions uh, that activation functions when you want to execute so before the activation function you have to know what exactly input is coming to the activation functions that is the perceptrons a small video you can understand what exactly perceptron work One second. Just give me 30 seconds to set these things. Just one second.
so that means you can understand that uh, that all type of uh, basics mathematical model are stored inside that inputs as a activation functions so so basically this is the structures where you can add all the inputs with respect to the weighted value the first thing is the most important things you have to initialize the weights and the threshold value threshold value is nothing but the optimal value depends on your requirement we can change the threshold and optimal value after that we have to the second steps that is that we want to create the proper input and what exactly our target output we have to define then updated weights with depends on that activation functions depends on that uh, perceptrons designs we can generate one by one weighted value and these repetitions work continuous between that inputs weighted and perceptrons that that is called epoch is epoch is repeated by 10000 20000 one lakh times depends on your data sets and finally we get the output so there is basically uh, the basics level of deep learning uh, three different type of uh, activation functions can use apart from that lot of different type of uh, functions are there uh, you can you can incorporate the basics level you can use these uh, three things one is step functions uh, zero and one concept uh, then uh, sign functions negative or positive concept of the input and output data sets and most important is sigmoid functions most of the deep learning concept incorporated in the sigmoid functions and sigmoid functions they are giving that lot of very much positiveness output inside this uh, activation functions just a small examples is that uh, how activation functions work if you have a data set of uh, dogs and horses so how we can classify two set if you can go for that second pictures we separate the two part of the animals but one dog in inside the horse area and one horse is inside the dog area so that is called error two next example the third pictures we can incorporate that all horses are the other classes but one dog is kept to the horse classes so that is the error one because one dog is not proper the last level dog and horses are both a separate different classes so that means activation functions can generate that way you can minimize the error part the first activation functions with the error two next error one next error zero that means you have the proper activation functions and deep learning architecture who are giving the proper output now what is the importance of activation functions just we consider that uh, in number of uh, inputs they have the two class one is red one is uh, separate class is the green color but how we can separate these two different classes is it possible for straight line impossible so that means linearity is not possible to separate the two different class if the two different classes incorporate each other so now just to observe left side pictures, if you go for the straight line, linearity of the classification of this part, it's very difficult to separate the entire output is a two different class. So that means your activation function is not proper manner. So that means linearity is not possible to get the proper output, proper classified with respect to input data set. Right side the pictures. If the activation functions act as a non-linearity, most of the output data sets are getting two different class green and red so that means our target is that linear with help of activation functions we want to convert the non-linearity so that is the most important role of the deep learning part now we have a uh, we have a uh, 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 time to go for the e platform because with this basic concept we can execute that e platform where we can uh, start for the demonstrate of the basics deep learning mode. Uh, basically, uh, in number of deep learning platforms are available, <coughs> but most of the researchers, most of the people's uh, uh, last five years, last ten years, when they are in UG, PG, and then research level, they told that I am incorporated in the MATLAB. Is the MATLAB is supported in the deep learning mode? So that is our target. Is it work or not? Just to observe the few minutes video.
uh, audience is the video audio is visible audible the audio is not uh, playing yes. yes 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 so that is i want to uh, one second uh, because we have to share the screen properly advanced setting one second uh share screen output yes i think now you can see this in the neural net toolbox i've written a simple little yes, program that does something pretty cool now it is audible yes sir it's audible okay, okay. i'd like to show that to you now what i've done is i've taken a webcam and attached it to a neural net that recognizes images so now i can point the webcam at various objects and it recognizes it a corkscrew or maybe a screwdriver or perhaps a revolver a harmonica a teapot a shovel that sort of thing it's not perfect but it does a pretty good job so let's look at the code that does this. This is the whole program right here. It's just 11 lines. We're going to go through it, but we're going to do it in three separate stages. We're going to clear the workspace. We're going to ask the camera to connect to the webcam, have the camera take a picture, and then finally show that picture on the screen. So when we run this, we should get a fresh picture going on here. And that's the picture we just took, All right? But that's a still image. We want this to be in a, a continuous video so we're going to add three more lines to put it in a loop. We'll put a while loop around the, the code that's taking the picture, and we'll add a draw now so MATLAB draws immediately. When I run this, we'll get the same thing, but now it's a live video. All right, finally, we need to add in the neural net. I'm using a network called AlexNet. AlexNet is a large, deep, convolutional neural net. They train this network on over a million images, and it can recognize about a thousand different objects. I've downloaded it and now we're ready to use it. Now, this line is gonna ask the network to classify the picture we just took. So we'll pass each picture to the network and it will return a label of that picture. Before we do that, we have to resize the picture to the size that AlexNet expects. It was trained on a particular size of image. Finally, I'm gonna use that label in the title of my picture and uh, I've got to convert it to a string with this command right here. So we're all set, those are the lines, let's run it again. And we're running again. I can recognize a keyboard or maybe a space bar, recognize my mouse, or maybe it's a spatula, and there we go. I hope the simplicity of this program encourages you to try out deep learning. So that means you understand that inside the MATLAB, you can easily ex execute the deep learning. But day by day, MATLAB is not free. Few institutions, they have purchased this software, so it is free. But as a normal researchers, as a UZPG students, as a normal uh, PhD scholars, how they can do the deep learning mode in the big, big, big environment. So for that problems, we can easily solve with the help of Google. Google they are providing is completely free in number of users, in number of data sets, everything they are providing and they are giving a platform where you can execute the deep learning. First, the small one minute video to understand what exactly uh, platform uh, how Google they are providing, then we can go for the demonstration part with this deep learning mode. Hello guys, welcome back to another tutorial. Hit the bell icon button so that you don't miss out any tutorial. In this section, you will learn how to use Colab, an amazing tool provided by Google to use their fantastic libraries, deep learning libraries, and more broadly speaking, to code on Python online. First thing that you have to do then is to type Colab here and click on Google Colab. So what's happening now is that uh, you're redirected on the Colab in a main interface. It's an online interface, it's a web interface. And what I suggest you do is you sign in. Um, obviously you need a Google account. I've got mine, uh, but it's just one click away to create one if you don't have it, then the password is wrong. Let me type the right password. There we go. 
let's start from the beginning. Uh, the first thing that you want to do is to create a new IPython notebook. So it could be, for instance, uh, a Python 3 notebook. And I'm going to magnify this view so that you can, you can see what's going on here. I'm trying the new editor. And here I've got a cell. By the way, I forgot to mention that if you already know how to use Colab or how to use um, an IPython Jupyter Notebook, just feel free to skip this section and go to the next one. Uh, the first thing that I would like to tell you is that the uh, main, one of the main functions, features of um, uh, Colab uh, is the ability to create cells. Uh, so here we have two types of cells, code cells and text cells. Uh, this is very, very powerful. It's very powerful because if I want to write, um, for instance, what I'm doing, uh, in this case is an introduction to Colab. Uh, I can do that. I can, this is marked down, so I can essentially um, create titles. I can move uh, these cells somehow. Let me see how. Um, yeah, somehow you can move move them. I don't remember how to do it, but it's fairly intuitive and easy. The interesting thing here is that um, once you have uh, the uh, ability to write stuff, you can even comment your code even before you are doing it. Uh, you know, so for instance, here I can say, okay, I want to um, showcase what code snippets are. I also want to look at autocomplete, um, the difference between uh, um, text and code cells, already done. And then um, I want to demo the share feature and the exporting. Now, here it's text. I can add links, I can add images, whatever I want. It's full markdown, so this is um, really, really handy. What I want to do now is to execute this cell. To execute this cell, I just click Shift uh, Enter. And uh, this time, I'm going to create a code cell. So a code cell is a cell that essentially um, is used to contain Python code. And uh, I could use, for instance, print statement, print hello world. Uh, I click here, I execute it, and the result should just be the string hello world printed um, down below. Now, as I mentioned before, um, there is an awful lot more of this, um, and in particular, if you're clicking here on code snippets, uh, you have a lot of very cool stuff. For instance, I like data visualization. So if we go here, we have, for instance, this kind of stuff, which is fascinating. Um, so essentially, this tab here enables you to copy and paste quickly uh, code snippets that you can use to then experiment and um, uh, look at your data, for instance, like in this case. So everything is pre-made for you by Google. How cool is that? So what you do here is you explore the data, then you can uh, um, alter this code, you can modify it, you can comment, uh, you can leave comments here, like for instance, uh, uh, fix, fix this um, bad code. New comment. Um, then another interesting uh, tool that I want to show you is this. So when you are creating code, like for instance, um, let's say that we take data. Um, there is this very, very helpful function uh, that it allows you to autocomplete code. <coughs> Sorry about that. And uh, here you can even see the documentation about a specific function. So this is pretty, pretty cool. Another cool thing is the ability to share. 
on this notebook with other people. So for instance, I can share with myself on another account. And so on. So I think you got the point. Okay. So that means you understand that basically Google Colab is incorporated in the Python, but R also you can execute in the Colab environment uh, nowadays. The important thing is that what is your requirement and how when you when you execute a code, uh, basically uh, in the C platform or normal uh, the other uh, Turbo C or C C P P compiler. Uh, basically, when you start your first live program, first coding uh, world, when you are entering the coding world, we can understand that we are only typing the code and if it is uh, uh, some mistake is very difficult to that level go uh, to execute the code. But in the Google Cola platform, they are giving the lot of type of inbuilt functions, auto error giving the support from the Google Cola and other important roles. Now, research is not a single people. It's a collaborative work. So how, how one code can incorporate lot of people's at a time. So that also options in built in this particular platform. That means first important thing is that Python support. Second is all important functions are available inside the Google. If you search in the Colab, automatically they will give this type of activity and some error part automatically they will solve their AI machines. And finally is that Automatically shared is the most important part. The research is not a single people, it's the co uh, cooperative work. So it's easily incorporate all the people and you can execute. So now I'll give you the, uh, I'll, I'll demonstrate a few examples how the uh, one students as a UG, PG or such as start the deep learning research at the basics level. Uh, uh, and also I want to demonstrate the COVID-19 few, few parameters, not enter the parameters already. Uh, we are getting a project from the government of India. We are doing that part. Uh, so few models I want to project today, uh, how it is work, how we can uh, design the deep learning architectures and we get the result. So in these first examples, examples, what we can observe, we can observe that uh, two inputs are there, inputs one, inputs two, and we are getting the output. Basically this is the OR gate, nothing else. So in this OR gate, uh, uh, we know that lot of applications are there, so in that particular applications, if we want to create a, a architecture, deep learning architectures properly, so that, that means that applications easily we can get the positive and plus point output from this particular architectures. No need to create all times application based design. One times if you design the architecture of the deep learning, that architectures learn each other's and they are give the output part. Uh, now I want to go for that uh, demonstration part with these particular examples. Uh, participant, please mute. Okay, thank you. Uh, hope my uh, collab platform is visible. Anyone please respond? Uh, yes, sir. Yes. Okay, thank you. Uh, basically, here you can understand that a uh, lot of uh, uh, separate separate module we want to create inside that Google Colab. Why I create this model, not a single line or entire single platform of the code because it's very difficult to understand. So what do we do first? We want to create one neural network from this concept of the deep learning mode. This is a text file, so easy to understand that. First, we want to create a new learning, uh, neural network concept for this particular programs. Doing that, you have to import the libraries because all maximum deep learning concept, deep learning applications, they are taking the inputs as a numerical values. Most of, not all types, because a lot of applications, if you go for that uh, uh, text as an input, video as an input, image as an input, or only audio as an input can incorporate inside the deep learning mode. That case is what to do. All the input you have to vectorize first. No, vectorize first means you have to convert all the different type of inputs type in the numerical forms. So basically all the numerical conversions is easily incorporated in the deep learning. First, we uh, comp uh, import that particular libraries of the pythons what when you want to 
call this each line try to execute the click this particular uh, run cell options you can press the control enter or you can click so automatically it will be execute and give on numbers after that in the programs we observe that or gate have the two different type of inputs what is the input set input set is that 00 01 10 11 so that things we are writing is the concept of basics array matrix form so this is just we declare on input variable np is the uh, libraries incorporate the number python's libraries then we call the array and input type if we execute and print so we can observe that inputs are well organized so this is that we have to match that what exactly our input or this input is similar or not so that means first level we call the libraries second level we are design that inputs after that what is our target output because we know the or get output is that what exactly so target output is 0 1 1 1 this target output again similar np dot array all the inputs and we have to print this one so again we check yes this is the correct so actually basically nothing else we are giving this uh, transpose options to get the proper uh, row and column concept to easily understand the output scheme after that we are giving that same perceptron concept we are uh, we, we are trying to give that uh, the concept of adding the weight bias and the activation functions so first we are giving the weightage of these particular things point 1 to point 2 basically there are lot of logic lot of concept are available to build your weightage part weighted part have lot of algorithms are available how to generate automatically maybe it is forward concept backward concept gradient concept cost estimation concept so this type of logics are applicable to define your weightage part properly we consider here point 1 and point 2 after executing minimum 4 5 uh, programs in the deep learning concept you can understand which properties is used to define your weightage part bias setting point 3 learning mode point 05 these three is the parameters of the perceptrons so you can set the inputs weighted bias and learning mode now we have to do the activation functions activation functions we consider the sigmoid functions now the, this is the fun, uh, formula is 1 by 1 plus e to the power x nothing else then after the call the activation functions we have to derive these activation functions in this way then deep learning mode the epoch concept we have to execute the 10000 times just you observes we can give 10000 why it is 10000 20000 50000 depends on your input and output ratio and basically this epoch they are uh, changing the each layer uh, accuracy level the predictions is tends to one but not one 100% prediction is not possible but tends to 100% so that 100% that epoch range is maximum we can get if it is size is more but don't think that if i give the 1 lakh epoch we get the better result sometimes up to the some point some saturations are coming just like the e to the power x just you graph if you observes tends to one but not one same concept also incorporated in this deep learning mode so then we can execute the forward concept backward concept and the cost estimations the error part after executing this all the things you can easily get the output what exactly we are design architectures in this particular deep learning problems but you have to remember the most important things more than 0.5 more than 0.5 labeling is the considered as a 1 below 0.5 labeling as a 0 so here we can get that 0.3 so below 0.5 that is 0 then more 0.6 that is 0 1 1 1 so that means our target our target is that we design the 0 1 1 1 and our prediction model what exactly predicted that is getting that this positive result so that means our deep learning architectures what we design for this particular model is getting that 100% result but why it is 100% because the input is only for that four set of inputs so we are getting that better result so this way you can execute uh, or get and get nor get xor x and x 
a lot all type of programs if you execute you can understand that basic things of deep learning with respect to input target input uh, input target output after that weightage bias learning mode forward propagations backward propagations after that uh, activation functions and getting the output basically uh, uh, if if you understand uh, the more uh, concept of inside the deep learning why why it is used for uh, that border forward propagations backward propagations basically inside the epoch epoch one loop is after executing one times again repeat so just going coming going coming these concept are incorporated inside the deep learning mode so this way you can execute this uh, deep learning concept so now i can go for the next examples next example is that uh, uh the most of the people uh, they want to do the research in the field of the covid 19 uh, uh just you observe the small data set actually basically this is not a real this is the part of the real data set there we are collecting we are observing this uh, four parameters this is the important part of your uh, research uh the first parameter is that loss of smell uh, the if any persons they are uh, they have no uh, smell concept in the nose so this is the first properties here some problems in the in this uh, covid anti cases and weight loss continuously you have that uh, sneezing problem that is uh, runny nose and the body pain this four parameter is the most important to calculate the covid 19 we have a actual data set we cannot project here because we are doing the live projects we are not uh, we are waiting for the government of india uh, approval for that basically we are collecting the 35 different type of parameters as input sets then we are getting the uh, output so what you can observe here that that it is the three cases we are getting the positive if uh, if you have uh, that loss of smells and body pains you have to incorporate that positive case second thing is that no body pains that is the asynchronous case that the people have the loss of nails and test to positive other all the cases there is chances of less positive case and important part is that continuously you have the uh, uh, runny nose and the body pains incorporate is that positive another one positive case is that if the people have the loss of snails and the weight loss within 10 days within 7 days uh, that uh, eating eating uh, interest is less so then we can go for the positive case so this data we are collecting from that <coughs> different type of hospitals in the government of india <coughs> and we are incorporate here so now we want to design a deep learning uh, uh, architectures they are automatically people are giving the information and they can predict again i repeat they can predict that the cases is positive or negative predictions is 100 persons is very difficult real life mathematically it is proof it is possible that real life it is impossible but you can try to minimize the error part 0.999 persons they you can get the predictions models so uh, if if you execute these programs again i want to go for the demonstration part they are uh, i can show you this hope my screen is visible anyone please respond yes sir it is visible ah uh, ah uh, uh. so in these programs i am not adding this uh, part inside that text and code mode i only created the code mode so you can understand that if you want to execute the click enter things will be execute but as a beginner level it's very difficult to understand how it is execute so i will request all the participants if you want to go for the collab try to go the text mode and code mode so easily you can incorporate any error level i have no error in this code so i can directly go to the last stage if you got for the any error part in any uh, any positions is it's very difficult to uh get that previously fast 25 code is correct or wrong so now i go for the expression part you can you can easily observe that similarly we can first import the uh, libraries of the python libraries this input 
all the things what exactly input is that 1001 all the things that is the eight set of input that we are go for the target output similarly we are design the weightage value bias value and learning the three properties for the perceptrons creations then activation function sigmoid functions derive the sigmoid functions to give the proper result and again we are using the range of uh, 10000 10000 epochs so it is easily uh, get that uh, this shortest uh, type of uh, input data set if it is huge data set you can give that 30 35000 is the better result for the deep learning mode then we can go for the forward propagations backward propagations error calculations and we can get that set of which set so these sets 1001 so that data set is giving the result of positiveness or negativeness. We are projected only three positive cases. We are giving here and we can get 0 0.6, 0 0.6, 0 0.6. So that means more than six value is that uh, 0.5 is at one. So three cases is one. So we tested the three cases in this, in this way, we can get the positive result. So that means this architecture design is that uh, uh, positive with this help of these activation functions what we use sigmoid is the important role and the important role is what exactly we are using the weighted value bias value and learning value this is the three in, uh, four important things to get the proper result to get the proper output of this particular architectures the next examples uh, next examples we can go uh, that way uh, that this is the this, this is the problems what exactly we collect from these uh, Niemann's hospitals one uh, doctor is working in our team uh, basically there are a lot of uh, neuro uh, patients are coming uh, but they, they they are trying to link neuro patient with the diabetic patients so then we have a team we are collecting the few properties few features with respect to diabetes, uh, uh, there are total 18 parameters are there, but we want to project uh, three parameters, uh, smoking, obesity, and exercise. Uh, the people are diabetic or not. Uh, we are giving the five, uh, five people uh, uh, inputs. If we train these five people, so easily you can, uh, you can execute this particular project. Uh, uh, so the parameters, uh, you can incorporate that way. If the people are uh, smoking, but if they have uh, uh, the exercise very less, so we can got that people are the diabetic patients. No smoking, no exercise, but these are the important parameters, obesity, they have the diabetic. So these type of uh, features basically we collect from the doctor's information, doctor's uh, parameters. Uh, they, are, they, they are collecting all the observations from that more than uh, three years, four years, uh, uh, 10,000 patients, 20,000 patients. So ultimately they conclude that uh, these three cases, uh, basically uh, most of the patients, they have diabetics with respect to these main three inputs features. So, but, but one person's how how they can uh, they can uh, predict that uh, the one on human is going to diabetic patients or not? Uh, it's very difficult. So, what our project is going on? Basically, we are giving this uh, 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 deep learning concept in the mobile apps. Hope we can launch these apps within uh, three to four months uh, after getting the uh, clearance from the uh, government of medical science. Um, uh, if they approve, uh, we can give this apps to free free by the peoples. You just give the uh, seven days data. The seven days data that you are smoking or not, obesity is there or not, and how what is the rate of exercise. There are some uh, questions that will come. If you give the inputs, automatically you can you, you can predict uh, not 100%, tens to 100% that uh, you are going to diabetic patients or not. So this is basically application space problems, what we are trying to solve in this deep learning mode. Uh, now I want to uh, again demonstrate this, this part.
is it visible on my screen can i respond anyone to response yes sir okay thank you uh, uh, so just you observe here i separated each and every programs each layer so you can understand easily when you want to execute the code that each layer if it is problem to get the errors automatically they will show you so you can easily understand that previous the, that, that 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 covid 19 uh, data set uh, program single set of the code so it is very difficult to error part but is this type of activity you can easily incorporate in the colab platforms so again first we on to uh, import that python libraries set of inputs after that we are giving uh, some labeling because we are label as a five person so we are giving the labelings and this is the target output so this target output if we are getting the 100 percent accuracy then these architectures we can fit for that n number of input data sets and you can get the predictions models here basically we are using the randomly generate the bias value and the weighted value because sometimes uh, weight and bias and learning features you can follow the different type of algorithms but in this cases we are using the randomly creating the weighted value then uh, on that activation functions sigmoid functions that the sigmoid functions just you observe here we are using the 10000 not 20 uh, we are using the 20000 not 10000 because when we are using the 10000 we are getting that only two positive data set for positive output not the others so then we we increase the epoch that uh, 20000 is getting the better result not that correct so one post one person uh, the last uh, uh, maybe they had the doubt that is it the loop is executed the 20000 if i give this uh, range of 20000 yes the google colab they have that background architectures they are executing 20000 times just few part i gave the steps of that weightage value how we are uh, increasing one by one level with the Uh, with the uh, with the help of this ten uh, thousand looping concept, basically Google have the architecture that after one loop they can predict that way that which loop have get the similar type of result. So then this loop can jump that particular loop concept. Apart from that, each and every loop they will be execute twenty thousand times execute and it's below one second is required to execute inside the Google Colab platforms. and uh, we and we tested the three data set uh, three type of questions uh, tested cases 100 that means no smoking no exercise no obesity here is no smoking uh, no exercise only obesity is there so these two cases we can get that uh, first one is zero because of uh, only smoking you cannot say that you are the diabetes patients but without uh, smoking with or exercise if you have the obesity you have the directly tends to the Diabetes patients. So these two cases I tested here, we are getting the accurate of the result. You can try that next other cases, zero zero one, zero one zero. So all the three cases, other pending cases, you can execute, and you can get that predictions of this particular model. Uh, because uh, because few people uh, they 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 want to execute the all the environment, so there you can understand these particular models. now now i want to give you the few 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 examples where you, you can think for the research then then we can go for the question answer part just you two minutes observe the video there you can understand what exactly deep learning is research is going on coming five years coming 10 years there you, you can project your idea one second is it visible hello uh sir screen is not shared sir one second one second yes sir ah yes visible screen sharing options is there yes one second is my screen is visible yes sir Yes. 
depending on what is in the picture it is possible to tell what the color should be for example the leaves of trees are generally green the sky is blue and the clouds are white so all that is needed to be done is to make a computer be able to do this and that is where auto encoders step in the next application is the feature variation it basically extracts only the required features of an image and generates the output by removing any noise or unnecessary interruption now using auto encoders we receive the same image as the input but with reduced dimensions it helps in providing the similar image along with a reduced pixel value now during the training the auto encoder learns to extract important features from input images and ignores the image noises because the labels have no noises the input seen by the auto encoder is not the raw input but a stochastically corrupted version now auto encoders are also used for removing watermarks from images or to remove any object while filming a video or a movie so now we have this is the one examples where exactly uh, research is going on with the deep learning people tend to get lost easily now these tend to be more difficult as people move out of the frame quickly and also because people are non rigid objects object detection is also used in industrial process to identify products finding a specific object through visual inspection is a basic task that is involved in multiple industrial processes like sorting inventory management machining quality management packaging and much more inventory management can be very tricky as items are hard to track in real time something is always added removed and moved every day Systems can perform automatic object counting and localization that will allow you to improve inventory accuracy. Now, this is one of the most recent and I should say one of the most exciting use cases of object detection, which is the self-driving car. It is a vehicle that is capable of sensing its environment and navigating without human input. Now, how is it done? Now, it combines a variety of techniques to perceive the surroundings including the radar, laser light, GPS, and also computer vision now here is where the object detection comes in place so the moment it senses a person on the road on its way the car automatically stops advanced control system interpret sensory information to identify appropriate navigation paths as well as obstacles now our so you can understand that lot of research is going on inside the deep learning mode uh uh so basically in this one and half hour you, you, maybe you have the lot of uh, questions query if anything you want to access from the deep learning uh, i just i just already created google classroom uh you just join the google classroom code their sample code are already available uh, anybody can access there are few quiz few questions also are available uh we can communicate we can we can give that level of support if you want to uh, learn you want to do the research for the deep learning please join this google classrooms and there all the information are available is completely free and when you are joining to classroom please don't use your institution's gmail id please try to use your personal gmail id can i repeat if you want to go for that google classroom enter deep learning ppt video all things are available if there you join with your personal email id don't use try to use the instance email id because some blockers option is there using the deep learning so now uh, uh, thank you for this giving the opportunity now i can expect few questions from the audience any questions please post in the chat box or you can uh, uh, unmute if you ask with the questions also Uh, so that would be a problem actually we'll okay 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 no issues you can put the chat box i'll, I'll uh, yes. look at the chat box and uh, i'll just read out the questions sir and dear participant this is the code of the google classroom either request the organizing committee please copy this code and paste in the google uh, that classroom uh, chat box so they can easily uh, join this google classroom all the ppts video information of research deep learning will be available after the sessions yes sir i did i did it sir i posted on a chat box of zoom okay. also i'll be putting in a telegram group so oh, that uh, they can access it sir yes any question from the audience No sir, no questions. Any questions? Please post in the chat box regarding 
the session. So Vasuki is asking challenges in deep learning. Okay, uh, very good questions. Uh, basically, uh, the deep learning, uh, when you want to design that way, that way means uh, you have a target that we want to use this deep learning concept with the help of any type of uh, n number of outputs, n number of uh, data set we want to execute. So in these cases, the first challenge is what exactly data set you are considering. If the data set is uh, uh, good, perfect for this particular uh, problem solutions, or you can, you can observe that when you are creating the deep learning architectures, how you are choosing the bias, weightage and learning. If these three things, one is that input data set is proper or not, all the data set is correct, correct uh, benchmark data set or not. Second thing is that when you are giving the training, the neural network, how you can giving the informations, weightage, uh, bias, and that uh, learning uh, propagations, if it is correct, then you can go for that proper deep learning mode architecture output. Sir, they're asking to brief uh, regarding the computer vision. Uh, basically, most of the uh, computer vision applications now uh, depends directly depends the deep learning because uh, just very simple things. Uh, last last year, we are doing one project in Australia, government of Australia. Uh, basically, most of the corporate company, company, most of the corporate world, uh, husband and wife both are working. People, they have no time to take care of the baby. So what we can do, we are giving the, uh, uh, we are sending the baby the daycare. Uh, baby care concept so there we are collecting the informations input data set features of the baby face the baby is happy unhappy or crying the three data sets we are collecting we are uh, collecting more than 50,000 of baby faces informations uh, and from the camera deep learning architectures easily we can uh, predict 100 persons, 50 out of 50 baby, which baby is more happy, how many days they are happy and coming 50, coming days, if they are happy or some problems, because sometimes the baby symptoms is not projected in the, within one day, two day, it will be effect visible after 10 days, after 15 days. Uh, so these type of observations we are collecting and uh, really we are uh, appreciate that uh, they accept our project and they are giving that uh, appreciations for this particular project. Uh, we we got 93 percent accuracy of the predictions that the baby is healthy, happy. Coming seven days, what exactly uh, that particular baby can do in this particular daycare centers? So this is the most important part of that uh, computer vision application based problems. So if you want to want to focus in particular computer vision project, just you think your environment lot of problems are there. How you can incorporate in the deep learning platforms? How you can get the data set if you get the data set proper easily you can create the particular positive of this particular mode of this one so there is a question from mr anil hmm. what is difference between collab and jupyter notebook in fact collab is using jupyter notebook any special reason to use collab exclusively uh, very simple thing uh, uh, the first 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 positive is that uh, just you observe without installations, you cannot execute the Jupyter. If you have uh, 5, 120, 5, uh, 5, 112, uh, 12 MB RAM, you have not 1 GB RAM. Is it, is it possible to execute the Jupyter? But if you have the only Google Chrome and internet, whatever you want in the deep learning architectures, what is the data set, size, in number of cores easily can execute. So that means your, your entire platform is not suitable for the hardware uh, perspectives. Colab, they're providing only internet and Google Chrome. So easily you can, you can execute all type of uh, project 
no need to jupiter no need to any software any hardware implementations with respect to particular colab sir uh, with dfc learning algorithms can we predict behavior of human uh, basically uh, 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 the is very difficult is very difficult means uh, human behavior human mind is fluctuated every second every microseconds so but a uh, few features if you if you see, if if you observe that uh, inside the classroom what exactly we are doing on project in my my university uh, that when a like faculty are giving the lectures how many students are there uh, listening there because some people they are only seeing the faculty not observing not listening another and the students uh, they are doing something in the mobile phone but they are listening the faculty lectures so these type of lot of parameters are there uh, uh, so in these cases uh, we are getting that 80 85% uh, positive or um, accuracy with the respect of deep learning correct the human behavior but we can say that uh, uh, you can uh, if you train the proper way in your uh, propagation functions maybe you can get the positive result in the human behavior in the field of deep learning mode sir best journal for deep learning papers uh, 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 basically uh, lot of ieee transactions in deep learning are there uh, that is very tough if you go for the beginners level so i will suggest you that uh, one deep learning journals the springers is very good just you search in the google uh, deep learning plus uh, springer uh, nature so uh, the first link will be visible that you can go for that uh, reference in the deep learning journals is there any practical difficulty while dealing with medical data set where we can get medical data set the first difficulty is the government of india they are not giving the permissions to do the research in the medical if you are the competence faculty again i repeat uh it's not easy to get the permissions uh, if you are a computer science faculty go for the direct medical science uh, research the government of law uh, completely different if you are doctor you can go for the medical research if you are a uh, normal things it's not possible to access so what you can do you can go for the collaborations you can go or collaborate with the, some doctors then you can get all whatever you want that collaborations is not easy you have a you 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 have a that that link that uh, give the positive of that particular uh, reasons that why you want to go for the collaborations what is your infrastructures what exactly you want to do because lot of uh, misuse can happen from this medical data set is it's it's completely completely just you imagine why why covid 19 is affect all over world uh, 10 years before uh, one of the scientist uh, clearly told that please stop to project the medical data in the website so now you can understand that how this covid 19 affected each and every peoples each and every environment so that means medical data is most important to society nations and all the things infrastructures also so uh, so for that reason a lot of law is there it's not easy to get the collaborations so first things if you have the nice connections to the doctors with the positive reasons why you want to go for the collaborations then depends on the institutions depends on the doctors they are giving the all the medical data sets then you can go for the deep learning research do we need to get into image processing techniques uh, for medical data set or we can directly put images in deep learning the direct directly for the testing cases when you are students as a beginners of the researchers you can give some input as a directly uh, you can download from the image on the internet uh, take a snap from this different informations you can test it but as a real when you design architectures when you try to give this applications in this real life then obviously medical data set is required otherwise is not possible so taking artificial intelligence branch for future engineers would it be helpful or do we need to take outside with the regular subjects uh basically uh, already india few universities they already started uh, uh, pg courses uh, ug courses depends on ai machine learning deep learning uh, actually basically with every day by day technology and concept of changes uh, advance so what is the what is the plus point is that now it is what maybe after 5 years new technology will come okay because when the when ai came we are thinking that yes ai is the best before 10 years but after that 
ML is case, machine learning is came, but now it is deep learning mode. So every every day by day, technology is improved. Technology is uh, not uh, stop; is going on. So now you can go for that. Coming five years, we can predict deep learning is most important, more application based. But after five years, we have no idea what deep learning will do. So maybe new technology will come. Where can I find some basic project ideas in order to practice deep learning? You just put an email to me within half an hour. I will, uh, I will send you. Okay. How artificial intelligence is related to Internet of Things? Uh, basically, IoT, IoT, uh, IoT is different, different, different environment. IoT is basically we want to give him the linkage with the cloud with the hardware. So there, if you want to use the deep learning, basically the data analysis part only happen. So data analysis depends on your applications of IoT you can use. Uh, but not for the architectures, uh, you can use for that uh, cloud data set, data analysis, the data mining, you can use for the deep learning. How does deep learning, machine learning and artificial intelligence differ from each other? Uh, basically, uh, machine learning, you are giving the information, you are giving that uh, knowledge to the machines, that machines behave what exactly you are giving the instructions that is the machine learning but deep learning from your instructions machine can learn each other that neural network learn each other so that means machine up to machine learnings you are trained the machines but after machine learning if the machines automatically learn from that particular concept it goes to the deep learning Okay, sir. Thank you for the answers and uh, I request Krupa madam to take over the session for out of thanks. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, sir. That was a wonderful and enlightening talk. Uh, now we have come to the end of the session. On behalf of uh, the management, the institution and the organizers, I thank speaker of today's webinar, Dr. Devavrita Samantha, sir, for enthralling the audience with her talk. I am thankful to Professor Vijay Kumar AS, Coordinator, Department of BCA, for successfully organized the webinar. I thank faculty members of the Department of BCA for helping to organize this webinar. The response we got this, for this webinar was overwhelming. It is your active participation, which motives us to conduct more webinars. From the bottom of my heart, I want to thank all the participants for making this webinar a success. Thank you, one and all. Feedback link will be shared now. Request participants to give the feedback and obtain your e-certificate. Sir, I'll be sharing your details in the Google Classroom code also in the okay. group. Sure, thank you, thank you. Thank, thank you, so you for thank you for giving me the opportunity. And we'll keep in touch if you do the further research. Oh, sure, thank you so much. Okay, sir. thank you.